Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Free to Play Jewels. My name is Jace. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we're about ready to buy packs 1 through 10 of both of the Gatewatch. We've already completed uh, Origins and Zendikar. We did recently. You can check the openings and play for those. Um, but we're going to get into these. We just need to get a little bit more and we've got some great quests. <clears throat> They're both looking for black. I think we're just going to play our elves. Um, so I think the elves in its current format, because we lack a couple cards, like Sylvan Advocate would improve it, I think, and certainly some of the removal. Oblivion Strike, I, I think I actually need, because we have no way to kill Ulamog um, if they do cast him. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff that makes it weaker, and I think this sort of uh, rank 27 is where it sits, really. I don't think we can do too much better, but we'll see. Board clears kind of wreck us, but I just don't see that many. Languish is becoming more popular, finally. It's always been a card I'm a big, big fan of. Um, but still, I'm not too worried about the remo uh, about mass removal. I think the meta, certainly before Shadows came out, was much more uh, <clears throat> like four or five color landfall, loads of ramp. Now that explosive vegetation's in, you know, you've got even more ramp. Uh, so I don't think people are too worried about mass removal. Although the white humans deck, white blue humans maybe, white green humans tokens, you know, all these sorts of things might be a little bit more prevalent now, so I think we'll see more languishes. Languai, I think is the plural. I'm not sure what the fuck's going on. Come on, let's uh, get into a game maybe. Well, I guess I can check just to get out of the stream. Yes, it looks correct. Okay, so I predict green black delirium based on this background. I like anyone who uh who designs their avatar to suit the deck. I don't think it's worth. I think it looks too cool uh to be wasting your time trying to bluff people. This is not bad. Um but how many turns have we got? Opponent plays first, so we draw, play, draw, play, draw yeah, I think we keep it. Bit slow, and we need that third land, but we get an extra draw because we're going second. Opponent is playing a 68 card deck at rank 17. And they are called, I imagine, Chinese characters X, but I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know if it's because I don't have a font pack, but I, I always see this sort of square stuff. Or not always. <laughs> Rarely, but I, I do see it, and I assume it's a uh, uh, a language pack I don't have, although I'm pretty sure I have all the language packs. I don't know why. Seems our opponent is incredibly deep in the tank on turn one. Debating whether or not they play a land and pass. I'd, I'd advise you play the land and pass, bro. Yeah. Okay, so that's a really good draw. So he is blue-green at the minute. Could be like a clues deck. Love to draw a two-drop at this point. Oh, we're just glad our opponent's starting slowly as well, I guess. But, uh... Playing... E-Colors... Playing Bant. 
Bant investigate, I guess. One dies, yeah. Alrighty. Um, I think given, I mean, maybe declaration of stones in here, but otherwise they have no removal. So, gonna play Liliana. Basically, we get wrecked by declaration of the stone, but I don't think anything else hurts. They could throw it back into our hand and do three damage, but declaration of stone, or I'm all good, I think. The issue with declaration of stone as well is that if he declaration in stones, what I play next, Liliana still won't flip because it exiles and doesn't kill. That's a bad attack because we're going to have a four point swing every time we attack with Liliana. Alright, so here I think we just get aggressive and drop the Huntmaster. We could drop Dwinen to block this actually. Oh, we waste a token. You know what? I think yeah, I'm going to play Dwinen. Okay, that's fine. You know what, I'm, too, I'm not too worried about his aggression, I am just going to play Lissel on a Huntmaster. For the extra tokens, I think we'll take this 3 damage. <coughs> Go to 14? That seems fine still. Besides, he could have a trick and I wouldn't want to block with uh, Dwine in anyway for that reason most likely. All this mana up. All right, so that's almost good. Um, I think I'll hold it because we can have other stuff we can do it to. Um, the thing is, if I play Dwine in here, this is a 4-4 that can block this. But if I play this, then I just get crazy amount of elves. I think crazy amount of elves is normally the way to go. We're going to go to 11 this turn. Um, but... Oh, he's got another puncturing light? No, an essence flux this time. What does it do? Okay. It's actually fine. So maybe Dwinen would have been better there. Oh, he's going to counter this on the way down. No? He's going to crack his clue. The uh, Zendikar one would actually break me there. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Two mana counters a creature card with where the mana costs three or less. But he didn't draw it, or he doesn't have it. Either way. Okay, so we got some removal. Um, okay, I play both of these guys for a bunch of elves. I don't think I do. I think I just play this one and read the bones. In that case, we should read the bones first. Uh, we'll take dismissal, I guess. Mm, yeah, I mean, if it is clues, and we have seen clues, then we are just going to see a lot of tokeny stuff. We are going to see a lot of, you know, three or less tireless tracker and things like that. Okay. Well, I am glad I got this. Oh no, am I even? Do I care? Oh, sweet. No. Oh no! Go! No! 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 God damn it! That's no, okay. He didn't get above three attack. <laughs> Whew. Plus one, plus two. But because I didn't get it, like it uh, fucked up on me. Basically, I clicked and it told me the system was busy because I clicked too early. I should have just stopped the timer and then done done things. But he, if he'd gotten up to 4 attack on that buff, then I wouldn't have been able to use Calculated Dismissal. Sorry. Complete disregard. I always mix it up. If you actually watch previous episodes, you'll hear me do that over and over again. Okay, so this is Dwinen and then Dwinen's Elite. Um, I am going to play Dwinen pre-combat. In fact, I'm going to play all of it pre-combat so I get the Elves. Because he could still have something here. 
Oh, maybe I should play, if, I, if I was going to play them both, I probably should have played the Elite first because of pointers. That's pretty bad for us. That was stupid. I don't know if he still would have done it. Hang on, does this have a? No, it is just counter spell. So maybe, maybe he would have gone it, gone for it on the Dwinin's Elite. And we would have had Dwinin with a bunch of. We would have had just the one token, but it would be a two. Or sorry, yeah, one token, but it would be a two-two, and this would be a four-four. I don't know which is better there. I mean, if we top deck um, Shaman, this is probably better. But then again, getting in for that amount of damage is still, you know, that's uh, six. Yeah, it's probably better to do it the other way around. All right, well, this is pretty good. I don't know whether I want to play Winnower or um, Reef Soul, to be honest. He probably counters Winnower. So let's do this first and hope he counters this. Okay. I am not going to play Winnower as we're playing against an extremely slow deck. Ugh. So it turns out the other way around was better, but um, we lose this guy no matter what. I'm definitely not playing Winnower. We are probably just about ahead. He actually has an extra card, but he has to spend the mana on it. We are at three cards our turn. We're going second, so... Oh, Tamio's journal. Okay, so this makes a clue every turn. And he can sacrifice three to tutor, which is pretty crazy. Um, well, we do play Lissalana. Okay, let's do this all pre-combat. Getting a Lissalana down while he doesn't have a counter spell is pretty good. And if I... Oh, you know what? I should have done this after. I was like, oh, well, if, well, then I can attack in, but I could attack in anyway and then be better off killing it post-combat. I was really bad. Art of practice. My bad. Sorry, guys. Still looking okay. Shaman wins. I can't shoot her until next turn, most likely. It depends if he can generate a clue. Okay, so he's not doing it. And he obviously has no tireless tracker, otherwise he would have played that first. Okay, so we get to kill the 3-2. Pretty sure we've won. There's no 2 minor counter spell that deals with this. Oh, he's getting a clue. Yeah, that clue. Okay, so we made maybe three, what I would call mistakes anyway. Still pulled it out. I was playing a strange deck. Oh, we did some uh, we did some science, if you guys are interested in this sort of thing. Uh, if you quit out now, like uh, if you alt tab and close the game, you do not keep your rank you do lose a rank as if you conceded the game and that is fucking awesome and it makes 
ranked almost it makes ranked viable actually it really does because you can't cheat it the way people were cheating it and that's nice because it equals the playing field for us who sort of refuse to do it just gonna uh, restart my laptop here to get it up on the stream so i can see you guys chatting away i think we'll maybe do some arc later i don't know if uh Aiden's going to be about. I kind of want to play it. I've, I've had an itching for a day or two. I basically spent the week setting up uh, a system. <laughs> That's all I can say. I set up a system. So I haven't really played many games. Been doing a lot in terms of uh, making things work with my system. Okay, let's just go get our fourth land. Unfortunately, there's no battle land for green black. A little annoying. Uh, what do we need? We've got. Well, it doesn't matter really. Uh, we've got a lot of black stuff, so we'll take a swamp. Next turn, I'm just going to play a swamp and read the bones, unless you play something reeve soluble. Okay, that's a pretty good Reef Soul target. Don't know if I just... Maybe I just want to, like, uh, read the bones and pass for now, though. And I can double Reef Soul the following turn. I kind of want to play less land the next turn. So let's just Reef Soul this and play a land. And then we'll list land the next turn with another piece of removal in hand. This looks like the same deck. Kinda. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's werewolves. Just so used to limited and playing this with clues is pretty common, just because of the color. Yeah, so the play next turn I think is less Alana in almost every single scenario. He leaves the mana up, I'd be a bit scared. Okay, Duskwatch. So we play less Lana and then the following turn we can actually Shaman and Reeve Soul and then draw into more stuff. Very tempting when you've got a uh, removal in hand against a deck that looks like it's going to be quite aggressive to um, to sacrifice tempo in terms of putting stuff on the board uh, to remove their stuff. And I think certainly when mana economy dictates, it's probably better to put stuff onto the field. Um, but I think also probably when it doesn't. <laughs> sure, it depends very much on your situation, but um, to generalize, I think it's probably better to put Lissalana on the board than it is to remove this creature. Okay, full turn to activate Duskwatch isn't bad for us. If he misses, it's incredible. Duskwatch recruiter, if you're not familiar. Okay. Adaptable. Okay, it is going to flip, is the issue. But we can still Reeve Soul it, so that's fine. So I don't even think I'm gonna shaman. I like to keep shaman, so we're just gonna reave soul this. In fact, cancel that. We're gonna draw first. I think he saw my reave soul when I did that, by the way. I'm not sure. I guess we'll take a card that is a card because we have enough mana. Yeah, that seems okay. I'm gonna kill this. He is gonna play a pacifist, most likely. Which we've still got kind of under control. I'm not too worried about that. So he's missed two land drops. 
Are we? And I'm not sure who's on the play. I think I'm on the play. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so we might even just disregard this. Well, we'll use our ranger. And I think I am just going to main phase disregard and play File Orchard. This isn't really isn't the best target for disregard, but we're just going to put in some damage. Gives us uh, the opportunity to play the tapped land. We're creeping on Shaman Lethal. If we if we draw a second Shaman, we do have Lethal. Currently, Shaman's going to do six. I mean, we might have it. Depends if he if he doesn't play a creature, he's dead. Okay. So we currently do seven total, including the shaman. So. Double Shaman would win it, I think. Of course, then we don't get it. Um, I think we might have to play our Shaman. Takes him to eight, and then takes him to four, leaves him at four. I think we do play the Shaman. Ah, that's bad, actually. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have just held off. I was like, I want to put lethal damage on the board. But if I draw any elf and just attack in next turn, I think I just win. So probably better to not have done this. There's tragic arrogance. Which confirms my suspicions. Pun intended. Or word, word association intended. Alright, so we'll just do one damage, play a land. Hopefully he thinks we've got removal. Tempting to not play a land at all because then he really will think we have something. But um, I think the plausible deniability is significant enough that we can play it. And I think the advantage I get from having access to all my mana is quite good. These two will never play. Alright, a shaman still isn't lethal. Oh my. Pass. So this is a problem. We need to. Uh, we have time in terms of the amount of damage we can afford to take. Uh, but yeah. Need to draw. Need to draw lethal. How does this guy work? Four or more creatures and then he turns into the cult leader, okay. Pretty good synergy with Nissa. Ooh, always watching. Fancy, fancy. Oh, it only works for non-token creatures, cool. Alright, Omnixilis is pretty good. I could play him and draw in the hope of getting what? Could probably play him and kill the advocate. Then I'd have to chump block to save him. Either way, I'm gonna have to chump block to save him. I think we need to stop this before it becomes the cult leader. We hope he doesn't have a land at the uh, cult leader. Jumps the 3 4. The thing 
is maybe I do need to draw, but this it's a pretty tough spot. I think the I mean drawing really is a reasonable option, but I would definitely have to give up my Omnixilis then. And we would be faced with the Westfield cult leader, who will get bigger every turn if I don't do something about it. Wow. Gets him anyway. Hmm. is interesting. So, with Liliana we can get back uh, the, the non-legendary. We get back Shaman for three. Basically I need to do one damage. Probably should have attacked. He would have had to block it, she would have flipped, then I would have gotten shit, nah, cause, no. Would have been short. If we draw any elf, I think I'm good. That hurts. Yeah, I think that's backbreaking. I think we lose. We still have a chance. We're on 15 he's doing to us, that's okay. We just have to take that. Oh, wait a minute. He got more because of all his watching. 10, 15. Yeah, no, we're still on 15. That's an extremely good play to leave back. Yeah, he deliberately left that back. So, otherwise, I could attack for one and then Shaman and Shaman would do two damage. And he booms. Think that I have it in my hand. Holy shit, that's really good. Can I win with it? I don't think I can. <laughs> uh, we're one damage short. He's got. He's only got four attackers, so maybe I have to get the elite. Or I could kill as always watching. I think we're still dead if we do that. Yeah, because they're getting that from a counter. Um, uh, oh god damn it. Oh god damn it. So many times. I look at this timer. The fucking orange one. That's the blue one. Ah. Right, we lose because of that. My bad. I could have got what I was planning to do was get the Dwine and and then we'd have four blockers so we could uh, prevent lethal, hopefully. And once we did that, all we needed was a shaman and we would win. Well, and we could probably attack as well. Oh, that was so ugly. I'm sorry about that. I think uh, in terms of Empty Geo more so, but Magic Jewels and Empty Geo, uh, as, ma as many as a third of your games will be lost due to button input issue. Like you don't pause it right, or you like we saw earlier, I clicked the card too early. 
and as a result it said system busy and I had to go up and click OK to then be able to click on the card again doing this all at instant speed should have just paused the game like you have to do all these semantic things to avoid semantic loss I feel like that was semantic loss I think we still probably lost ultimately in most scenarios but uh, that was very disappointing at the end there we could have definitely bought bought another card draw out of it Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it's, these are really slow hands that we've had to take here, but I think every game we've had to take a slow hand. There was one where we had a Sylvan Ranger, but basically Shaman of the Pack is not a three drop. Shaman of the Pack is just a game winning card, so we have nothing until turn four here. But given the way the deck works, we should draw into it. As we do have a three drop now, so we're gonna scry two and draw two. Okay, so we're playing against the uh, Thopter deck, which is kind of not great for us. The only thing that uh, actually blocks flyers is Dwynen herself. And we don't have any mass removal. I think I actually hope to draw a land here to play Lissa Lana before these guys. Nice. I'm going to play Lissa Lana into Lissa Lana into Shitler of Elves. Now the issue here is that he could have what is a Fiery Temper. We could have um, Ari Impulse, so his Impulse is only going to do 2 damage at the minute. But Red is, uh, Red's got some good spells to be dealing with these cards. Nice to have Bellower in hand though. And a Shaman. So technically we have 2 Shamans in hand. Gotta keep that in mind as the game goes on. We're going to be able to generate a lot of elves very fast here. I'm not going to block that. Fiery Impulse, I think, is what he has. Oh, Twin Bolt. Okay. Just double twin bolt, it is okay. Oh, how will we ever win now without our little Lana hunt? My oh, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, you got another two. I would still be happy with that trade, I think. I think that was uh, where things go wrong for you and then you make a mistake as a result of it. I don't think it was worth him using both Twin Bolts on my Lissa Lamp. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to skip again because you have Twin Bolt. <laughs> Alright, telling time and he's left of the red mana so he has red cards. Doesn't discard, does it? It's just anticipate. All three cards. One of those in hand, one on top of your library, one on the bottom. Okay. I was worried in case he could discard Fiery Temper with it. Boulder Salvo. Surged Boulder Salvo. Alright, so do I just play Bellower? Put on a lot of pressure. Yeah, I couldn't draw into Lissalana on player, so. Um, so the best play here is probably Reclamation Sage just to kill his thing. Yeah. So 
So that's a good tempo turn for us. The the issue is going to be awesome double shaman. The issue is going to be whether we can kill my Balor. Is another boulder salvo we could do. It. We don't have roast in jewels. I think once the uh, rotation to assume it's Ravnica next happens uh, after Eldritch Moon, then uh, then we will have access to standard effectively minus about 80 cards per set. But as things stand, Cans of Tarkir, or sorry, Dragons of Tarkir is still in standard, and we don't have that in jewel. A bit different. So I can do a lot of damage this turn. I'm going to read the bone Sylvan Ranger. Sylvan Ranger. That's amazing. So we're definitely going to take this, and I guess we'll take this too. Uh, then we're going to play a mana, and we're actually going to play Sylvan Ranger Visionary. And then next turn we just blow them to pieces. Might even have been right to uh, play one Shaman there. Problem is, if he has like some sort of fireball, he doesn't have enough though to pull it off. He would also need to charge in with something when we have chump blockers, so that's okay. And on our turn, we have eight mana, so we're one short of being able to triple shaman, but I think we kill him with two. Certainly two in an attack that isn't blocked. I mean, if this guy gets through, then he's dead anyway. Okay, so this guy doesn't get through, so we do four, and then that's five is nine, and another, yeah, we just kill him. Oh. Okay, so I have eight, so I can actually cast a visionary before I cast the other shamans. No, we just do loads of damage. It's a pretty good draw, though. So that's five. And then this one's six. And then we just need one damage. Right, so we have enough gold. Um, oh, wait a minute. Why did that look wrong? There we go. <laughs> yeah, when it does that. Okay, so we've got plenty. We can actually open. Uh, so 1500 is 10, and then, oh, almost two more. Almost 12. Oh, I kind of want to squeeze in that extra one. No, no, no. Yeah, I did this with... Oh, this is a really interesting deck, actually. We'll talk about that super quickly. I tried to put together something uh, with just recursion on recursion on recursion. So we came up with this deck called Thanados. If you don't know, Thanados is uh, death in Greek. And A, as with words like atheism, like whatever, it's uh, negative, so it's never dying. And we have splinters because we can sacrifice things and it's not a big deal. I mean, we'll start off with what the deck is sort of built to do, which is bring things back <clears throat> with necromantic summons, which we almost always have spell mastery. So it basically uh, gets the biggest thing and then gives a plus two, plus two, which is really good. Um, 
We got Rise in the Grave, which is just a shit version of it. Uh, we have um, Green Warden, which this is crazy, right? Green Warden looks okay, but a five four seems bad for six mana. That's that's how I first looked at this card. The issue is that it returns target card from your graveyard to your hand, not target creature card. Target card, and this is the same for the same reason. Um, Possessed Scab is really good <clears throat> because you get to return instant sorcery or creature card. You can't get artifacts and enchantments, but whatever. This guy, we could even return a land if we wanted with this guy, which is crazy, and it's the exact same on the other side. So when you play him, you can go and get your languish. When he dies, you can get your languish. That's basically what I do. Basically, all of these cards just get back languish. So turn four, we languish. Turn five, we get back languish. Turn six, we languish. Turn seven, we get back languish. Turn eight, we languish. Like, there is no way to stop me once I'm there, except you counter my return languish card, and then I'll just do it next turn with another card that returns languish. So we can also get, you know, uh, targeted removal, like Cruel Revival, which brings back zombies if we want. Um, we can get uh, we can get Flashbag, I guess, if we wanted. Uh, we can get Reeve's Soul, we can get Bone Splinters. But most of the time, we're going to go and get Languish. Really cool that we can get Omnixilis back. Um, Woodland Bellower, just a good card, is able to pick up Visionary to get a... So it's a 7-6 draw card for 6 mana. I uh, could get Cull Blade, so it's a 7-6 with this upside. So great. Probably wouldn't get the Spoiler. But Flashbag's a really good card to get. Especially if you only have one of them in your head. Oh no, you can't get flashback because it's black. You also can't get Malachi or Callblade. You get Visionary or you get... Um, you can't get Nissa because she's legendary. You get Visionary. It's probably not the best card, actually. But I just like it. I like having it in the deck. Uh, it'll probably be the first one to be cut. But this is pure rough draft. We really don't like these. But um, we're limited in terms of what we have available at the minute. Grave Digger gets us back a creature card. Um... Erebos' Titan is just a very hardy creature, and we're playing enough black mana, as you can see here, just to make sure we cast that normally on turn four. Liliana is awesome, brings creatures back from the graveyard. So this guy just gets bigger when our creatures, our opponent's creatures dies, and we have, you know, a decent amount of ways to kill them, so it's okay. I think this gets cut as well. The spoiler I have, just because it keeps coming back, we actually built a stack initially for a quest. Um, to bring things back from the graveyard, so uh, that's why I had guys like this. They're probably not good enough. I mean, maybe they are. It's just a beater that we can get back. It's actually not bad. And Bone Splinters is great because we can use it on the spoiler and then get the spoiler back. This is just good. Draws cards. Up next, this kills things. That's about it. Basically, the plan is just keep bringing things back. Now, there is a deck out there that uses uh, what's it called Salvage Drone, I think. Yeah, Salvage Drone. There's a deck out there which is actually a Reanimator deck in Jewels, which I've only seen once. But the guy played uh, Salvage Drones on one, try and get you to block them, and then he would loot, so he'd get to discard a card, and he would discard, like, Breaker of Armies, or he would discard Ulamog, and you go, oh shit, what's he going to do? And turn five, he brings back a 12-12 Ulamog, which is pretty fucking insane. So I think that's a pretty good deck, given that Jules, you can't, like, you can't Blistering Rage somebody in Jules so easily. We don't have these big... Uh, super damage double strike cards uh, at the minute, or enough of them to make it work. So, turn five, you kind of just win is reasonable. Like, the winning on turn five with a 12 12 is pretty good in this game. I mean, with Ulamog, Ulamog's indestructible, so they would require an exile spell. Though there are some exile spells um, as a result of both Gatewatch and Shadows of Renistrad, which we don't actually have access to at the minute. So that makes it kind of less good. Um, Ulamog does not, his ability doesn't trigger off the back of them, um, which is a bit of a bummer as well. But still, 
A 12-12 indestructible on turn 5 is very, very hard to beat in this game. That's pretty cool. That's interesting. Alright, um, I guess we're just going to open 11 packs. I'm happy enough to do that. Uh, I'm going to restart the stream super quickly just to split the videos. If you're going to drop off because you're not interested in pack openings, thank you for hanging about. Uh, if not, I will see you in like 5 seconds. Thanks very much guys. My name is GS. It's free to play Jules.